and all the best. Yes, thank you very much, and uh, hello, good afternoon. So, for the ones who were here yesterday, it is partially a little bit a déjà vu, and I initially wrote this paper here because I was looking in general at Hong Kong street furniture uh, because I found uh, this retro futuristic aesthetic uh, very appealing. I'll share more about it in a moment. Um, I start with this image here, which you also saw already yesterday. Um, I worked previously in Singapore at the um, um, School of Art, Design and Media, NGU, and uh, my field is in digital imaging and media art. And while being in Singapore, I was really impressed by this um, kind of tropical architecture. Uh, you find a lot of these walkways, very long walkways, which provide shelter uh, for um, heat and rain. And um, in 2015, I think I started working on a stereoscopic uh, video and uh, shooting basically these architectural uh, locations in uh, 3D and also found a lot of different ways, different possibilities to present it. Um, with lenticular printing, anaglyph, um, then uh, for the video projection with different methods and uh, even uh, created a small stereoscope and um, then also added elements uh, to these photographic images with augmented reality. So this just as a starter, now I'm in Hong Kong at the School of Creative Media, again, a really weird, uh, <coughs> fancy building. <coughs> but what I'm uh, more interested in are these constructions which have been built in the last um, century, um, about uh, 40, 50 years ago. And uh, some of them are really, um, yeah, called as Instagrammable uh, locations. A lot of people flock there to shoot uh, pictures. One of them is the uh, Yip Street Pedestrian Bridge, uh, also called Jimmy Bridge. And it is a very particular uh, construction in the um, cityscape. So you can see here, oh, see we have a little delay here, um, how it really winds from one place around um, to the other. So you can spend quite um, a lot of time in that bridge. And it became quite famous uh, with the um, um, movie Love in a Puff, uh, which basically um, is all set inside that bridge. So this is kind of a very iconic element um, in Hong Kong's uh, street furniture. Another one, let's see, I need to slow down a bit. Uh, another one is to find in Causeway Bay, another footbridge, which in this case is built as a circle around a bridge. And uh, when you pass uh, through Causeway Bay, um, yeah, you spot this immediately. It is quite a remarkable construction and also um, these elements like um, the, the staircases going up and the connected uh, tram station. Uh, they have very particular shapes and colors um, change every now and then. And uh, some of you might know that particular bridge from Ghost in the Shell, a um, movie from 2017, or also a more independent movie from Heinz Emikolz, Die Letzte Stadt from 2020. So um, a lot of these uh, constructions are actually um providing some movie backgrounds so um many of them get redecorated uh, hong kong has some issue it looks like with these concrete constructions and um uh, for instance here um, the whole walkway got uh, refurbished uh, strangely these pavilions um, they remained but they are now um yeah got some addition, uh, additional elements and uh, there's LED light at night, so um, they are illuminated in a, a range of colors. A lot of these con uh, concrete uh, structures, um, they are getting kind of um, yeah. more colorful. Uh, also for the footbridges, there are some um, initiatives to uh, just paint um, butterflies and flowers on them. Um, I didn't put any images inside uh, because um, what I'm more interested, well, okay, yeah, some get removed. Um, this is in uh, Sham Shui Po. Um, it was a very central um, clock tower 
and right now there is a petrol station so there is no reminder no remains and it's also quite difficult to find actually images of these um, well overlooked um, constructions and uh, many of them they're not really uh, considered as uh, worth to preserve so i uh, started collecting uh, at least visually some of them and uh, going through hong kong capturing images um, just with the mobile phone to get the exact location where they are based and then going back to these locations to um, yeah properly record them i flip through a few of them so that you get um, a little bit an idea of the aesthetic the style um, the colors are very often in, in pastel tones um, and there are a lot of different purposes for them. This is from the police station. Um, this here is just a, um, a service center where there's a market and uh, hawker uh, centers. So a lot of uh, the shapes are very roundish, uh, like here that uh, kiosk. And um, yeah, quite particular elements and, um, as I say, um, distinct shapes. Um, so this here is a newer construction. It's a bit different. Here is again the concrete. And Yeah, many of them are connected uh, with uh, stairs and again we see these shelters which um, I uh, started capturing in Singapore. All right, so this is mainly to, to give you an idea on um, the, the style of these um, basically overlooked uh, constructions. And what I find um, also very interesting about these elements is actually the patina, the way how uh, they wither in um, the, um, yeah, the intense climate in, in Hong Kong. Uh, you see a lot of the, the paint coming down and uh, they, um, yeah, this really gives them some, some kind of um, specific aura. And uh, my aim was to keep a memory of um, these concrete sculptures in 3D, not just as a flat image, as a flat um, uh, um, representation. So yesterday um, I shared with you, uh, together with uh, Ben Seide from uh, Singapore, uh, this project here. This is a case study number one because this is a very large uh, um, element and in some ways this took over, this became the main uh, focus of interest. Um, I was looking at medium-sized constructions as well, like here, uh, pavil pavilion, and uh, this is how you find it on Google Maps. Um, so a lot of people um, come up to me and say, well, actually, it is all captured on, on Google Maps, why do you bother? Um, but the 3D reconstruction uh, quite often is not detailed enough. Often it is um, hidden under trees, under other elements. So it is definitely worthwhile going there. And the third uh, part is really looking at the smaller items. So these concrete flower pots, uh, again, they have this very specific shape and also in, in pastel colors. And what I'm really interested in is capturing the spatial dimension. So I started with uh, stereo photography and uh, what I found quite interesting working with um, um, the large format camera gives you a very good uh, possibility to actually set the offset by just moving the front standard, uh, the lens, um, capturing digital. I don't, uh, well, I go back to analog photo photography too, but in this case, um, this is, uh, for static objects, a very good way to capture, actually, the 3D impression. Uh, another method is to use the mobile phone, but here you're quite limited. You can't change the lens, you can't really uh, adjust the offset, um, but it is a very um, yeah. fast way to capture objects in 3D. 
And we introduced yesterday also the dual fish eye lens, uh, 180 degree side by side image. Works very well if you work specifically for the headset, but for capturing these objects for um, printing and for, for other purposes, um, you see that it is um, quite an extreme wide angle what uh, you get in your final image. So this is here a comparison with the large format camera. I can really choose my lens. I can decide um, how I would like to, to have my object, uh, object captured. Also, I can adjust the offset of the lens. Um, for the iPhone, um, the, with the ProCam app, where you have the built-in uh, stereoscopic um, possibility, um, you can't choose anything. It looks like a normal lens. It looks quite all right. But again, um, you're limited. Um, and for the dual fisheye, you get a very extreme wide angle. Um, so for stereo photography, you have an objective view from the position you take as um, the photographer. You have a fixed perspective. Your lighting is fixed and your focal length is uh, fixed and it is impossible later on to combine these objects which have been all captured in different light situations in different um, uh, yeah situations so um, the 3d model will be the actual um, way to keep track to keep a record of these um, items so um, Again, a project which, uh, on which I worked with uh, Benjamin Seide um, from the Yunnan Garden. We uh, gained quite a bit of um, expertise in photogrammetry. This works very well for organic structures. When you walk around um, the object, then you have the possibility to capture it from all sides. Um, so for the photogrammetry, for the small objects, it's nice but for larger ones in hong kong it is quite difficult to get the drone license and uh, to get the permission to record in this area then it is quite time consuming and um, again the results are convincing for organic shapes but not so much for architectonic structures it is a good foundation however for 3d modeling and uh, what I started with is uh, just using the mobile phone for the uh, structured light scanning, also with the small built-in LiDAR. Um, for this large object, which we shared yesterday already, um, uh, we used the Leica BLK360 scanner. And um, the texture is um, not really convincing uh, when you work with a point cloud then um, it can be quite interesting. Um, but I uh, mainly want to talk now about uh, the smaller objects, like the pavilions. And for this, um, the 3D scanner app, uh, Sidescape or Scanniverse, work quite well to record this uh, object from all sides and also get a sort of decent picture of it. Problem, uh, you can't go on top, you can't uh, access um, certain uh, areas which, um, yeah, which are basically not accessible. So um, therefore a combination of um, uh, 3D modeling and using these apps uh, worked here quite well. Um, I don't go now into detail because of the time uh, with the different uh, applications. Um, so um, I figured out the 3D scanner app uh, for on the iPhone uh, is a very good possibility to get um, a basic capture of the object, also to get a decent texture. Um, you can see this is the, the model of the, um, the flower pot uh, just scanned. And uh, here we have the same model again optimized in, uh, as a 3D model. And the advantage is here now that you can adjust the lighting of the object. So um, my aim is to combine um, a lot of these different uh, urban constructions uh, in VR and um, with the possibility to have them as a 3D model, I can adjust the lighting. I can as well adjust the perspective and look at it from different uh, viewpoints. 
And um, most importantly, I can also adjust um, the focal length, length uh, the distortion which uh, the object has, and in the end, bring them all together in um, VR experience. So I was initially hoping I'm a little bit further with this project already today and uh, give <laughs> you a little demonstration. Um, yes, I hope next year I can come back and uh, share more about uh, these, um, what I consider interesting urban structures in public space. And if you have any questions or suggestions, um, please let me know. And uh, thank you very much for your attention.